I, would, I want to kind of start with very, very somber um, figures. And obviously, these are behind the figures are um, our fellow human beings. And as of today, COVID-19 has claimed 5.5 million people worldwide. It's an incredible uh, statistic. And, and nearer to home, uh, 150,000 people in Britain have uh, died of COVID-19. And on our Ireland, 10,000 people have died thus far in relation to the pandemic. It's taken a terrible, terrible toll on those people and their families and society as a whole. And there is hope, because without hope, there will be despair. And the, the, the pandemic continues to separate us in some ways, but also unites us and it brings us together in other good ways. And this forest minister is universal and it's, um, it's indiscriminate. And through science, we have found a vaccine that at least stops the ravages of this terrible, terrible disease and saves lives. But at the same time, we have a contradiction that while we have a vaccine, many, many people in this world cannot get access to that vaccine. And almost 40% of the world, of the population of the world, has not got one single vaccine. Um, and even health workers in the developing world have not got access to this vaccine. And it is quite extraordinary in circumstances of uh, a world emergency that vaccines, access to vaccines, uh, countries cannot get access because of pharmaceutical companies having control over their supply and the intellectual property rights. Now, many people will ask if there was if this is not a time to waive intellectual property rights, when, when is it? Um, and it did, as I said, the, the, the stats are extraordinary. Even this week, Minister Oxfam Ireland uh, stated that vaccines were meant to end the pandemic, yet rich, rich countries allowed pharma billionaires to cut off the supply to billions of people. And many people through NGOs, religious organisations, civic organisations are calling for a waiver to end the embargo uh, of the intellectual property rights for, for countries to make these vaccines. And the argument is that while well, countries uh, in the developed world can't uh, make these vaccines, but they have the infrastructure in India, in Africa, uh, factories ready to go where they can mass produce these vaccines. But pharma, big pharma, is uh, not allowing that to happen um, and are allowing people to get the disease and die. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody that could stand over that. Nobody, I don't think anybody could stand over in here, really, with a, like, with, you know, with a serious face. But that's uh, the reality. And, you know, last December, a motion was passed in the Shannon calling on the government to publicly call on the European Commission to support um, the trips waiver. But the European Commission has failed to do so, even though two countries of the European Commission, Italy and Portugal, have said they support the TRIPS waiver. So, Minister, I would call on you, uh, as part of the government, to use your influence uh, as uh, a TD, uh, as part of the, kind of the Cabinet and so forth, um, to push for a TRIPS waiver via the European Commission so people can get access to this vaccine. Thank uh, Deputy Gina Kenny for, for raising this debate and this important discussion. Uh, and again, the figures you outlined and the loss of life that we've seen all over the world reminds us all just how serious COVID-19 is uh, and the impact it's had on many, many people's lives, those who've lost their lives, their families, and many of those who've been left very ill and sick through COVID as well. And then again, to reiterate the importance of all of us the world over working together, uh, which is what we try to achieve through the WTO talks, over 164 countries working together and making decisions together. But it's important that Ireland are in the middle of that and leading that, and I think the Irish people will expect us to do that as well. So I want to thank Deputy Gina Kennedy for putting this motion down. I am conscious, or this debate down, I'm conscious you had it down for discussion probably around a similar time as the Shannon debate 
in December, but it's important that we get a chance to, to look back over it as well. And it does refer to the Ireland's and the EU's position at those talks, which haven't happened yet. The scheduled meeting was put off because of the Omicron variant as well, but hopefully they will happen again soon. And there has been ongoing uh, meetings and discussions over the last few months, but we need to have those formal talks as well. It is important to point out that the TRIPS is an international legal agreement between all the member nations of the World Trade Organization, the WTO. Therefore, any proposal for a potential waiver, variation or waiver of the current IP protections under the TRIPS agreement is for negotiation at the WTO, where Ireland is one of 164 members. And it's important that we do happen there and we use our influence there through, through the EU Commission, who's, who we speak together. As Deputy Kenny is aware, the Taunashta and the lead minister in our Department, Department of Enterprise, Trade and Employment, is on the record of saying very clearly that government is a very strong supporter of vaccine equity in the world, and morally we need to make sure the world is vaccinated. And it's something we are very committed to as a country, because that will represent the views of our people. And that's why we didn't uh, oppose the motion in the Senate as well. I think everyone here today, or everyone in the Dáil, uh, would support this view, as was the case when I addressed this matter in the Channel recently in December. I wish to reiterate what I said then uh, to the Dáil this evening, that Ireland will continue to do all we can to help make sure countries worldwide have access to COVID vaccines for their people. We will do so as universal and equitable access to vaccines is crucial in the global fight against COVID-19. Ireland will continue to engage with the European Commission and other member states on the EU position for the WTO discussions and how the flexibilities within the TRIPS agreement can contribute towards increasing the manufacturing capacity and the equitable access to vaccines around the world. The EU continues to be committed to an open and comprehensive dialogue with all the WTO members and to explore how the multilateral rules-based trading system can best support universal and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines and treatments. This is why the EU proposed an alternative to the TRIPS waiver proposal as well. That proposal was targeted and pragmatic and aims at ensuring that governments can resort to compulsory licences, including to export to countries with no or limited manufacturing capacities in the most effective manner, adapted to the circumstances of a pandemic. The EU will also consider any other pragmatic proposal for a TRIPS waiver, and should a further proposal be submitted, and something that we again are very committed to, to working through as well. Um, we have an open mind in Ireland, and as an Irish Government, on the alternative suggestion of a TRIPS waiver. The Tall Minister recently met the United States Trade Representative, Catherine Tay, and made it very clear that we would happily look at a proposal uh, if one lands and discuss that with them. Uh, and it has not yet been formally put forward that those talks have not formalised yet, and hopefully that will happen soon. The EU position has repeatedly made it clear that it sees intellectual property as being part of the solution to the pandemic and not the problem. But it is an issue, and there's IP regimes in all our countries, and something that we are very, very, uh, have, a, have a role in our department as well over many, many years. And because of that IP regime, we have seen billions invested in many drug treatments and solutions all over the world, as well as COVID-19. And a lot of the taxpayers' money in many countries was put forward in the billions over the last couple of years to, to work with those previous um, um, that previous research to develop the drugs are now helping us to deal with COVID as well, and it's important that we get that balance right. Consideration of this matter must balance the need to encourage and incentivise industry to continue to carry out research, to innovate and to develop new medicines and medicinal products during this product public health crisis. Intellectual property protections are a crucial incentive for the research and development of new vaccines, modified vaccines adapted to new variants and new medicines and treatments for COVID-19, as well as investment in production capacity. Intellectual property, in our view, continues to play an important role as an enabler that contributes to our overall objective of ramping up production of COVID-19 vaccines and medicines. Therefore, again, any solution must balance industry's research and innovation costs and the importance of maintaining a workable IP regime with the importance of ensuring fair, equitable access to medicines and medicinal products during this public health crisis. And we remain very much committed to achieving that through dialogue, through the European Commission and through the WTO talks as well. Thanks, Chair. Um, Mr. I want to just emphasize again uh, the, the amount of public monies that have been invested by governments to private companies to, uh, to um, research this vaccine. It runs into billions, tens of billions at this stage. Um, and at the crux of this argument, because we can talk about the kind of and the almost intellectual lies, uh, you know, why companies have to have a property rights about what they create. Well, we're talking about an emergency that the world has never seen for the last 75 years. We're talking about people dying unnecessarily, while pharma 
big pharma um, create huge amounts of money and profits for their shareholders. So it's a kind of it's a binary choice. On one hand, is it to protect big pharma and their kind of intellectual product, or is there on the other hand to protect uh, the vulnerable, the poor, the people that can't get access to vaccines? So that's the binary choice, Minister. And when it comes down to it, uh, there are governments in kind of rich countries that don't care about poor people. And they never have, because that's the nature of capitalism. Capitalism at its heart has to uh, you know, cannibalise you know, consume and consume and profitise from a product. And that's what it's doing with a vaccine. Uh, so, rationally, you would think that this vaccine would be available to everybody. Everybody in this world would have got at least one, at least one. For 40% of the world has not got any. Now, how anybody logically can stand and defend that, well, I find that very, very hard to take. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, again, thanks, Chair. And, and I want to be very clear with Deputy Kenny. Uh, that the Irish government and the Irish people absolutely do care. And our response uh, to this and the Irish response to the pandemic has been rooted in our commitment to the principle of universal and equitable access to vaccines and treatments. And there's, there's to be no doubt about that. And we'll continue to use our influence right across, right across the world on that. And it is right and it is fair to say, and I acknowledge it myself in my opening comments as well, that billions have been invested from the public purse, from countries and governments all over the world on behalf of their taxpayers. But that in conjunction with many billions spent before that in relation to developing those drugs has enabled us to be in the position we are now to have vaccines and a number of treatments as well. So it's how we, how we utilise that wisely to reach as, as, as those who need it in all developing countries, in all situations where there's poverty as well, as well as continue to be able to invest in, in future treatments for future drugs and future emergencies. So we have to get that right. But we are absolutely clear we have to, and we know it's important to make sure there's equitable access to those vaccines right around the world as well. So Ireland will continue to engage with the European Commission and other member states on the EU position for the WTO negotiations and discussions on how the flexibility within the TRIPS agreement can contribute towards increasing the manufacturing capacity and the equitable access to vaccines around the world. Consideration of this matter, again, must balance industry's research and innovation costs and the importance of maintaining a workable IP regime with the importance of ensuring fair, equitable access to medicines and medicinal products during the, this public health crisis. That balance is key to protect the future investment from all of us, taxpayers, private, etc., as well, that we get the best bang for a buck by putting the two together. We all recognise, and we're very clear in the Irish Government, that global access to vaccinations is essential to curbing the spread and future mutations of the COVID-19 virus. Ensuring that developing countries have, uh, have access to vaccines is a complex endeavour that involves a number of policy and operational areas such as manufacturing, supply, distribution, transport, storage, capacity to manage vaccination campaigns and the uptake of vaccines by citizens in the countries concerned. So while the production of COVID-19 vaccines has substantially increased globally, Fair distribution, as well as diversifying production, remains major objectives and ones we have to achieve. I think we can certainly agree on that as well. The focus is now shifting from vaccine production to administering vac vaccinations and how strengthening health systems and the preparedness is pivotal to the achievement of the 70% vaccination target. So we have to come at this from a range of areas, but absolutely we're all committed to the one agenda here, which is to make sure there's fair and equitable access to the vaccines right across the world. And that's something that the Irish Government will continue to do on behalf of the Irish people as well.